Here we are, another episode of The King of Random. Today I'm reacting to a video that I have never seen before. Uh, Grant made so many videos. There's actually a few of those still floating around. This is homemade fire starters. I'm actually really excited to see this content and you're gonna see a very genuine first time reaction. Grilling is a summertime favorite, but no one wants to be the guy that can't get the grill started. One of the simplest mic hacks you can use is to light off a handful of potato chips. What? Not only are they delicious, they can be surprisingly flammable as well. <laughs> but in this project, you get to keep your snacks intact because we're hacking a new breed of party roasters and it all starts with your empty drink cans. Okay. We're all familiar with the term life hacks, but this summer the guys at Mike's Hard Lemonade asked me to help put a refreshing twist on it with what they're calling Mike Hacks. Mike Hack. Basically a, <laughs> it's life a great hack spin. that makes any social occasion more awesome. Now I just got a tube of chips to start the coals on my grill. That's pretty awesome, but they're expensive and don't burn for very long. So in this project, let's make something that's guaranteed to get our fires blazing every time. These miniature fire starters are simple to light, amazingly wind resistant, and pack enough power to get a full size campfire blazing without any extra tinder. Okay, this is really cool. I actually was just playing around in my shop with two different designs of something very, very similar to this. I had no idea I was gonna be watching this today. They also double as a miniature fire pit just in case you get the random urge to roast some munchies. To get and who started, doesn't? We're gonna need some empty aluminum cans and some corrugated cardboard packaging. Now let's use a pair of scissors to carefully cut the bottom inch off the can, keeping the cut as clean as possible. We'll need to do the same thing with the second can, but let's make this one a few inches taller. Now check this out. If we fill the larger can with something like crayons or old candles, then heat it up for a few minutes, we should be able to get the wax to start melting. And that's probably gonna take a few minutes, so in the meantime, let's try cutting our cardboard casing into smaller strips. The okay. Be about an inch high to match the I see where he's going. Inside. And the goal here is to roll the pieces so tightly that they just barely fit inside the can. See, I was using carbon felt for this process, but that's significantly less common than cardboard. This is great. While we're here, let's fold another piece of scrap cardboard in half, cutting a slit down the middle so that when it's pushed into the center of the roll, okay. the pieces fold out to the sides like little flower petals. All right, it's time to check on the candles. Nice. You can see they're completely melted now, and the can is really hot. So let's use something like a pair. Oh, and he's even got it bent, so there's a little spout so you can pour it. Yeah, Grant thought of all the little details. ...of pliers to grip it and to carefully pour the hot wax over the cardboard. The cardboard should soak up the wax, and when the container is full, let's just set it to the side for a few minutes to cool and harden. Now you can see here that different size cans will make a nice variety of different size burners. And if you try removing the casing after they've hardened, you'll be left with an amazing mini fire log. It's kinda that's cool. It's completely consumable and won't leave any metal behind in the fire pit. Nice. Now I chose to leave the casings on because it keeps the wax from dripping out as it heats up. And as a result, these little guys will burn at high intensity for over an hour. Nice. That's more than enough to get your campfires or stack of coals roaring. Now I wonder if there's a different material we could use in there that would burn longer. I was curious, wondering, what do you guys think? What, what could you put in there that would cause that to burn for a significantly longer period of time? Maybe we could start using it for heat. These aren't limited to lighting coals and logs. I found they can make a nice tabletop centerpiece for backyard parties as well. I placed a few rocks around the can for effect and got an instant micro campfire. <laughs> that's probably the coolest thing I've tried all day. Well, now you know how to convert some of your leftover party trash into an amazingly versatile micro fire pit, which will help set the mood for your romantic evenings and ensure you get the blazing fire you need every time. The best part is they're lightweight, dirt cheap to make, and surprisingly wind resistant as well. Well, that's it for now. If you like this project, perhaps you like some of my others. Check them out at thekingofrandom.com. Hey guys, I just wanted to pop up and say thanks again for watching this video and congratulations on making it to the end. I really appreciate you watching the whole thing. Now I'm going to be looking at the comments again and this time I'm curious to know what kind of things have you done at parties or barbecues or seen done that have just blown your mind or just made such an impression that you remember that party? Were they projects, life hacks, experiments, the ones that stand out and come first to your mind? Leave them in the comments below. I'm going to be reading them, and you never know who else is going to be reading them as well. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the future for more projects and experiments. Well, that was awesome. That's so cool. I'm actually playing around with uh, an indoor heater 
that hopefully I will be able to use something like that for to create heat for your home very inexpensively. So I want to know what other ideas do you have? Put them in the comments. We really want to know. We do read all those comments and you might see that in another video. So remember, let the random happen.